Look at how that news impacted currency markets with Stan Chamu from IGN Melbourne. Stan, thanks so much for your time today. Interested to see what you expect during the Asian session today in reaction to those numbers out. Certainly better than expected jobs data from the United States. Yeah, absolutely. The two biggest moves, I suppose, were in the, the Aussie dollar and, of course, the, the um, dollar versus the Japanese yen. Uh, with the Aussie dollar, of course, it was underperforming last week. Uh, I think a lot the market was quite well positioned for uh, a good a good chance for cut this week, and that that really was a fairly dovish um, sort of outlook by most of most investors, considering that uh, the fact that we were um, seeing uh, global data hit a bit of a soft patch. I think uh, a lot of local investors were starting to think that maybe the RBA's hand will be forced to finally pull the trigger of course in the recent statements we've been hearing the RBA talk about uh, being ready to act if the need uh, arises and of course uh, uh, weak PMI readings across the globe particularly from the likes of China and Germany uh, along with the US were more than enough for a lot of investors to think um, this might be it for, for, for the RBA and this might finally see them uh, come through with a cut uh, of course Friday was a bit of a surprise for everyone uh, U.S. data was also looking like it had hit uh, an extended soft patch, but uh, I think a lot of people were caught out by uh, the, the uh, non-farm payrolls coming in at 165,000. The market was positioned in the 140 to 145,000 camp, and of course, uh, this really did help alleviate some concerns that uh, the, the global economy was going to struggle for a while. And uh, with um, the jobs numbers showing uh, good good strength there, I think uh, everyone's uh, uh, everyone's uh, thoughts were: look, this is still a glass glass half full approach and of course we should keep bidding um, risk uh, uh, risk assets higher of course uh, we did see the Dow the S&P and the DAX all traded record highs and this really boded well for for quite uh, quite a lot of the commodity space as well with uh, the likes of copper uh, pushing over six percent higher as a result the Aussie dollar responded quite well jumping up to a high of one zero three two three and uh, of course with uh, the the, um, the RBA rate decision due out tomorrow with a lot of um, the market space positioned for, for a cut. I think uh, it might be a situation where we see the, the dips being the most likely scenario that will see buyers come back into the market, particularly down to that 1028 level that uh, was the breakout level last week. And uh, it really is now uh, key near term support. Any moves uh, into that region might uh, be greeted by buying heading into the RBA decision. Uh, of course, today we've got the, the retail sales numbers due out as well expected to be up about 0.2 percent uh, so that that's probably not going to be uh, much of a train smash for for investors if we don't see such a good print on uh, the retail sales side of things so there's probably actually more likely would have uh, of an upward surprise if you uh, if you actually think about it because the market hasn't been confident about the retail sector for a while uh, we also have of course the uh, uh, MI inflation expectations we also have um, we also have the ANZ job ads so there's quite a lot of data in the mix at the moment and heading into tomorrow's uh, decision will have the trade balance numbers as well so there will be really a good sort of uh, string of data to look uh, to look at um, ahead of the, the RBA so we'll see a lot of repositioning on the Aussie dollar over the next uh, 48 hours or so so we do expect fairly choppy trade but like I said before I think the dips will be used as an opportunity to accumulate uh, as for the dollar yen uh, Japan's closed today but of course uh, those uh, payrolls numbers will be enough to see uh, Asian investors uh, react to um, what, what their expectations of the US dollar going forward um, I think a lot of uh, investors were starting to position for potential for the potential of uh, QE um, purchases uh, being um, increased uh, on a monthly basis but I think that really threw that idea out of the window for now uh, so we'll probably see a situation where the dollar will extend its gains against the yen uh, I think uh, that bounce into that 9927 level will probably be uh, the, the near-term trigger for for a move back up to test those highs at around 99.95 when we came within that striking distance of the 100 level so this week might be the week we finally see this dollar yen trade into 100 uh, of course we might have to wait a little bit but uh, I think uh, um, any breaks above Friday's high for for the dollar yen we'll probably see it move back into that range US non-farm payrolls also setting us well uh, up for the equity market open today at 10 a.m. Spy futures up about a percent at the open. How do you expect that to play out over the first few hours of trade? 
Yeah, absolutely. It should be a good open for the Australian market. We're calling it up 1.2% uh, to 51.90. Uh, of course, this is um, just shy of that 51.95 level that we printed recently. And with commodities coming to life um, on Friday, I think uh, it will be a fairly good day for the resource names. Uh, we're expecting BHP up around 2.6% from its ADRs. Uh, we also think uh, we'll see big gains in the copper space with the likes of uh, Oz Minerals, Panost and uh, Sandfire ca coming into play today. Of course, um, the, the resources have been dragging us lower, uh, whilst the, the yield plays have been powering higher over the past few weeks. So if we see a situation where they both move in unison higher, I think the market could be in for a very good start to the, to the week. Uh, of course, um, once we br break through 5200, that will be quite a psychological boost as well for local investors. And if you really ca cannot ignore the fact that um, the likes of uh, the DAX and, and U.S. markets traded at record highs. So with the Australian markets so far uh, off its, its record highs, then um, we can only expect investors to uh, get a bit more optimistic about the situation. Of course, even, even if we don't get the rate cut tomorrow, I think um, everyone will take solace in the fact that maybe um, the, the global, uh, global economy is, is, a, is, a better space to, is in a better space at the moment, and maybe we should um, continue to get involved in this rally. For, um, otherwise, we might just miss out. Um, of course, we'll have uh, Orica in focus. They had their first half results today. Uh, is they seem to have missed on uh, on income, on dividend, and of course on revenue as well. So that might disappoint, but some some uh, might feel that uh, the fact that they're looking at higher profits or a better uh, sort of FY13 might be a good sign. But uh, at the same time, uh, the market's looking for yield at the moment, and if they're not offering uh, the, the, the dividends that the market's expecting, I don't I don't really think it will be a, such a positive thing to have um, a better forecast for the second half, even if. Uh, uh, um, even if it's only a, a sort of a mild improvement, I think uh, the market will really look at this dividend story as, uh, as the, the way to go at the moment. And um, we, we've seen the evidence over the past few weeks, really, so this should be quite negative for Orica. Um, at the same time, we've got, um, I think, um, uh, Arciano with the reports that uh, it might be looking to, to, um, to, to pay a little bit more back to investors there, just um, after cost-cutting uh, probably yielded some sort of um, savings and helped uh, on their earnings side of things so there's definitely quite a bit to look out for these retail sales numbers will also put the retailers in focus of course we had that uh, profit upgrade last week from JB Hi-Fi so that stock will be firmly in focus along with some of these banks uh, like Macquarie and um, and of course Westpac which came out on Friday and saw some pretty choppy or big moves really so we'll have to see how the market responds to it today okay Stan Shamu thank you so much for your time this morning always appreciate it just go well, the government is facing yet more problems with its upcoming budget. According to the Financial Review, Treasury has lowered its growth forecast